Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Virginia Tehan. I'm Chief Executive of the Heritage Council, and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our event this morning. Today's event, the award ceremony for the Museum Standards Programme of, of Ireland, is a key event in the Heritage Council's calendar. And we recognise at the Heritage Council the significance of your work, the achievement of an MSPI standard, no matter what level, requires great work, dedication and commitment. Today is a day of celebration and congratulations and enjoyment. So I hope you enjoy your day and that you take time out to celebrate and acknowledge your achievements. The format of today's ceremony is we will invite, I will invite our guest speaker, uh, Dr. Kathleen James Charkaporty to speak in a moment. And secondly, then, uh, Leslie Ann Hayden, our coordinator, will present each one of the uh, awards. And finally, the chairman of the Heritage Council, Michael Parsons, will wrap up the proceedings. As many of you will know here on the webinar this morning, Professor Kathleen James Charkaporty is a significant contributor to cultural heritage discussion in Ireland. She's worked as Professor of Art History in UCD for over 10 years now, and her work extends beyond the university. Her contribution to cultural life is recognised by her leadership roles in the Irish Architectural Foundation and as a member of the board of the National Museum of Ireland. In 2018, Kathleen had um, the extraordinary um, success in being recognised by the Royal Irish Academy for her contribution to scholarship and particularly to cultural heritage through the award of the Gold Medal for the Humanities, the first time in over its 230 year history that the Academy awarded this distinction to a woman. Kathleen's research areas are mainly in 20th century architecture and she's written uh, significantly around the Bauhaus movement, but I suppose what makes her contribution to Irish cultural life interesting is the international perspective that she brings to scholarship on this side of the world. In particular, Kathleen's book, Irish Art, Indian Art in Ireland, is a really interesting uh, global perspective on this small part of the planet and our contribution to cultural discourse. So I'd like you to welcome Kathleen and invite her to speak at today's event. Thank you. Thank you so much, Virginia, uh, for that extremely kind introduction. It's an enormous honor to be asked to speak to you today. I grew up in museums, that's why I'm an art historian. My grandfather had retired from the National Gallery in Washington before I was born, but as a child, I loved to accompany him on his visits back to it. He would spend as much time chatting with the attendants as introducing me to the art, which taught me the importance of the people who work in front of and behind the scenes at museums to our experiences of them. The National Gallery, like so many Irish museums, was free to the public. He always said that the citizens of the United States collectively owned its impressive collection, and we shared it with the visitors from abroad who were our guests. He was also indulgent in the way that only grandfathers can be. The prize for good behavior was being allowed to eat whatever I wanted in the staff cafeteria, meaning that instead of the healthy sandwich my mother or even my grandmother would have insisted upon, I got to lunch exclusively on five layer chocolate cake, a treat that didn't exist in the small town in which I was growing up. So unlike many, I came of age entirely at home in museums. Museums are, with public libraries, I think the most empowering of our civic institutions. But where libraries focus largely on texts, museums offer a festival for the eye as well as the mind. In the 19th century, middle-class families often gathered around the fire in the evening with one reading to the rest. But today, communal reading is largely limited to primary school and to religious ceremonies. In museums, by contrast, we look collectively as well as individually. 
with the experience of sharing in the wonder of anything from an exquisitely crafted medieval relic to a vase that was just like Granny's, forming a bond between us. We come to learn about ourselves, but also to gain an understanding of those who were or are quite different from us, not least in their skills as makers. I can't draw at all. When as a historian of modern German architecture, I visit a new city there for the first time, I hasten to the art museum to see its treasures, but I also never miss the city museum that tells the place's history through objects, some of which may not rate as works of art, but many of which are just as interesting when they do not. From the clothes and toys of a different era to the celebration of the local manufacturer of goods probably now made in China, it's here that I come to learn about what anchors the specificity of a place. Today, after 10 months of a pandemic that has all but closed museums at home and certainly abroad to us, we know what we are missing. We miss seeing objects that are old favorites. We also miss being introduced and challenged uh, by new ones. We miss having a moment to ourselves with something special, as well as sharing a treat with an old friend. We also miss the chance to celebrate this occasion together in Kilkenny or Dublin, as all of you so richly deserve. Of course, networking is important, but so would have been the festive atmosphere around celebrating a job well done. The Museum Standards Program is important in part because it is so rigorous. And I commend all of you for its adherence to its high, for your adherence to its high standards. As a trustee of the Chester Beatty Library and more recently as a board member of the National Museum, I have seen firsthand how it helps professionalize an organization, whether a small museum run largely by volunteers or a large national cultural institution. It has done an enormous amount to pull a sector that continues to be woefully underfunded and understaffed here in Ireland, nonetheless into conformance with international expectations. In some cases, it has helped provide the resilience with which to address the pandemic by assuring that there are plans and procedures in place so that we are not all completely flying by the seat of our pants, although it usually feels that way, in a kind of challenge we haven't witnessed, or it has not been witnessed here for more than a century. So I don't think any of us in the room have probably witnessed it personally before. Museums are in some sense the storehouse of our past, but the hard work involved in the implementation of this program also demonstrates that they are dynamic institutions that operate very much in the present. Meeting the standards for accreditation from the Heritage Council is an important step in keeping your museums secure, relevant, and compelling. My warm congratulations to you all. Thank you, Kathleen. It's my great pleasure now to invite Leslie Ann to present the citations. Hello, I'm Leslie Ann Hayden, the Museum Standards Programme Coordinator. I'm so pleased we are acknowledging your achievements today. Just sorry we can't all be together. I'm imagining you all as I speak. Also, please do use the chat room to let us know you are here and to say hello to fellow colleagues in the sector. I'm now going to do my Sharon Niviolon impression and will read out citations for each institution, starting with those that have achieved interim accreditation and moving to full accreditation and ending with maintenance. So starting with the two museums that have achieved interim accreditation, which means they have achieved 25 museum standards program standards. We have two institutions, both local authority museums, Carlo County Museum, and Cork Public Museum. Carlo County Museum submitted an application for interim accreditation in September 2019. The team is led by Dermot Mulligan, its curator. The MSPI assessor said, Carlo County Museum has benefited from a considered and measured development over many years. 
The museum project complements the council's ongoing and significant commitment to a range of well-regarded cultural and heritage projects across the county. Many of national significance. The development of the museum has benefited from the continuous engagement of a dedicated staff member, Dermot Mulligan, who has steered the museum project judiciously and with care. A core team of staff and volunteers is allowing the museum to engage more actively with the community and visitors. It benefits from a range of imaginative educational and outreach programmes, acknowledging the wider cultural links across Ireland and Europe. Congratulations to Carlow County Museum. And now Cork Public Museum, which has also been awarded an interim accreditation certificate. And their team is led by Dan Breen. Cork Public Museum joined the programme in 2017. It submitted an application for interim accreditation in September 2019. The MSPIS has said, the museum's collections relate primarily to the historical and archaeological heritage of Cork City and County. The on-site collections are generally well cared for and well organised, while the curator's enthusiasm, passion and drive, both for the museum and its contents, is very evident. Since the MSPI first assessment visit in 2017, the museum has made considerable progress. The museum has now developed a mission statement and has adopted a well-developed strategic management plan. It has also developed the following, a collection policy, disposal and loan policy, and a documentation procedural manual. A building maintenance schedule is now in place and discussions are taking place with the city architect regarding the condition of the older building. Pest control measures are in place and a visitor survey was instituted in 2017 and analysis submitted as part of the application for MSPI. Much has been achieved since 2017 and the museum and its staff are to be congratulated. Congratulations to Cork Public Museum. And now we move on to the organisations which have achieved full accreditation, that is, they have met all 34 MSPI standards. We have four institutions here, starting with Glebe House and Gallery OPW, then the IFI Irish Film Archive, then Kilmainham Jail Museum OPW, and finally the Little Museum of Dublin. So starting with the Glebe House and Gallery, which you can now see on your screens. The Glebe House and Gallery joined the programme in 2017. It submitted an application for all interim and full accreditation standards in September 2019. It has completed the accreditation process in three years, led by curator Adrian Kelly, ably assisted by Nolene Lowry and Jean Carney. Applicants normally take five to six years to complete the process. The assessor said, the Glebe House and Gallery staff should be applauded for their efforts in the last two years to meet the MSPI standards and aiming for full accreditation on their first attempt. The Glebe House and Gallery has one of the finest collections in the Northwest and visitors have commented on the quality of the collections and the programme of interesting and often challenging contemporary temporary exhibitions. The collections of Derek Hill and Donegal Art Collection and programmes of the Glebe Gallery are a jewel in the offerings of the OPW in the northwest of the country and deserve recognition. The house is carefully curated and visits are enjoyed by a wide variety of visitors. The staff are well versed in the needs of museum collection and aware of the standards required for the safeguarding of the collection in terms of environmental controls, pest measures, handling and movement accessioning and marking objects. Congratulations to Glebe House and Gallery. And now we move on to the IFI, Irish Film Institute, the Irish Film Archive, for whom full accreditation is also awarded today. The IFI Irish Film Archive also joined the programme in 2017 it too submitted an application for all interim and full accreditation standards in September 2019. Like their colleagues in the Glebe, the Film Archive has completed the accreditation process in three years, led by the head of the Irish Film Archive, Cassandra O'Connell. The assessor said, 
Major achievements have taken place since the initial assessment in 2017, including the building of the new store at Maynooth. The commitment to collection care and documentation continues to be amply demonstrated, as is commitment to the training and continued professional development of the staff. The assessors noted that the IFA staff are now being called upon as sector leaders to share their expertise within the profession and through teaching at the university. The team at the Irish Film Archive has used the MSPI application process as a vehicle to step back and consider how they work and how integral the archive is to the wider objectives of the IFI. The policies and plans demonstrate how they work within the organisation and contribute to and contribute to it. We congratulate all involved in developing and approving these for its setting of clear goals and drawing together of all the different roles of the archive. Congratulations to the Irish Film Archive. And now Kilmainham Jail Museum, OPW. Kilmainham Jail Museum is a national monument in the care of the Office of Public Works. Kilmainham Jail Museum received its interim accreditation certificate in 2019. It has now submitted a successful application for full accreditation, confirming achievement of all 34 standards. The site is managed by Niall Bergen, while Brown Crowley is the curator and the lead on MSPI, ably assisted by Aoife Torpy. The assessor said, the Kilmainham Jail Museum team have worked systematically to improve their standards since their initial application, again exceeding the requirements. Their submission for full accreditation demonstrates a very high standard of museum provision, care and visitor experience, underpinned by the OPW heritage conservation resources and helped by cooperation with other museums under the aegis of the OPW. The OPW itself has shown itself to be a flagship organization for its implicit understanding of what can be achieved by the MSPI and by its desire to implement the MSPI programme to the highest possible standards across its museum sites. The OPW is therefore also to be commended for its sustained and systematic approach to acquiring MSPI for its historic properties. As a result of this strategic approach, the standards of museum presentation, documentation, collection care, visitor experience and public engagement are being steadily applied at a very high level. Congratulations to Kilmainham Jail Museum. And now the Little Museum of Dublin. The Little Museum of Dublin submitted an application for interim accreditation in 2016 and received an interim accreditation certificate in 2017. The MSPI project manager is Sarah Costigan, Director of Operations, supported by the director Trevor White and an enthusiastic team of staff and volunteers. The assessors said, the Little Museum of Dublin interprets the history of Dublin in a way which is exciting and innovative. It delivers its public services to a very high standard and meets all of the requirements of the Museum Standards Programme for Ireland. Since its inception in 2011, the Little Museum has established itself as a popular and exciting part of the cultural life of Dublin. It has developed an imaginative approach to the presentation and interpretation of its collections, and this enables lively engagement with visitors and an increasingly significant role within Irish public life as a promoter of the social history of Dublin. Plans to extend the space of the museum form part of the museum's strategic vision and are well advanced. This is an exciting development and will further establish the Little Museum as a significant part of the Dublin and Ireland museum circuit. Congratulations to the Little Museum of Dublin. And now we move to the organisations who have been awarded maintenance of accreditation certificates. MSPI participants who achieve maintenance of accreditation have submitted an application three years after they achieved full accreditation. And there are a couple here today who have received second maintenance certificates. These are applied for within five years of achieving the first maintenance. This marks a serious commitment from participants to embedding the standards into daily life at their institutions. 
And the five sites achieving maintenance today are Photo House, which we can see, the Irish Heritage Trust, the Hunt Museum, Shackleton Museum of Thigh, and two Waterford Treasures sites, the Bishop's Palace and the Medieval Museum. So starting with Photo. Photo House received a full accreditation certificate in 2016. Maintenance of accreditation was project managed by Dr. Emma O'Toole, the Irish Heritage Trust curator, and Martina Madden, curator at Photo House. I would like to note that the museum standards program was new for both of them, and they undertook working to confirm the standards had been maintained with great willingness and single-mindedness. Their assessor said, it is very encouraging to see ongoing progress at Photo House as the Irish Heritage Trust continues to apply and invest in the standards underpinning the MSPI programme. Particularly evident is a strong emphasis on the quality of visitor experience and a high standard of volunteer management, both of which are contributing greatly to the sustainability of Photo House, with a growing number and range of volunteers and a high number of repeat visits. These strengths are su supported by a core of excellent collections management and care, underpinning the richness of the offer at Photo House. It is clear from the accreditation application that MSPI is now central to all activities with all staff and volunteers aware of the programme and appreciative of their role in implementing and maintaining museum standards. This shared sense of responsibility is crucial to fulfilling the purpose and benefits of MSPI. Congratulations to Photo House and the Irish Heritage Trust. And now we move on to the Hunt Museum. The Hunt Museum received a certificate for full accreditation in 2014. The MSPI team is led by Naomi O'Nolan, Head of Exhibitions and Collection. The assessor said, the Hunt Museum holds a significant collection of artworks of national importance based on the collection of John and Gertrude Hunt. The relatively small staff deliver an effective programme of exhibitions and an extensive programme of activities to enable the museum to engage with a wide range of audiences in their local community and beyond. The museum has high standards of collections care and collections management, which underpins their activities of scholarship and public engagement. Since achieving full accreditation in May 2014, the Hunt Museum has undergone a period of uncertainty with no director being imposed for two years. However, the Hunt Museum has continued to maintain the interim and full standards required by the Museum Standards Programme for Ireland. The director, Jill Cousins, Naomi O'Nolan and the museum staff are to be congratulated on their achievement in continuing to maintain the standards. Congratulations to the Hunt Museum. And now Shackleton Museum Athai. The Shackleton Museum Athai, then called Athai Heritage Centre Museum, received a full accreditation certificate in 2016. The team is led by Margaret Walsh, ably assisted by Sinead Cullen, and supported by the museum's board, chaired by Frank Taft. The assessor said, the museum submitted a very comprehensive application and this careful preparation, along with supporting data, ensured that evidence of maintenance of the standards for full and interim accreditation was quickly assured during the visit as discussion progressed. During the assessment for full accreditation awarded in 2016, the museum presented an ambitious plan for redevelopment, which would encompass the entire building making a strategic shift to focus on the association of the polar explorer, Ernest Shackleton, as a native of Athai, and to reinvent the museum accordingly. Since then, the museum has progressed well in its objective and a very ambitious project plan with major backing from Kildare County Council and other partners now means that the museum is poised on the threshold of the promised redevelopment. That redevelopment has a central place within the community and also aims to underpin the revival of the Athai tourism economy and economic regeneration of the area. Congratulations to Shackleton Museum Athai. And finally, to our two last sites, both Waterford Treasures, the Bishop's Palace and the Medieval Museum. 
MSPI maintenance of accreditation certificates are being awarded to both sites which submitted separate applications. The curator, Rosemary Ryan, led the MSPI project with the support of director Eamon McEnany. The Bishop's Palace and Medieval Museum were awarded maintenance of accreditation for the first time in 2014. The assessor said for both sites, the assessment and discussions have made it clear that the unquestionable success of both the Bishop's Palace and the Medieval Museum are the result of the enthusiasm and support of the museum's board and the city and county council. It is equally clear that the management and staff of the museum have played a pivotal role in this success through their knowledge, experience and academic ability. It is refreshing to see such enthusiastic support for the creation of an ever improving public service. This is based on full appreciation of the significant collections and the application of sound curatorial processes in the development of the museums, coupled with the prudent and timely investment. In relation to Waterford Treasures, Bishop's Palace, the assessor said, the Bishop's Palace is one of a portfolio of cultural and heritage attractions situated in the Viking Triangle of Waterford. The museum's development has been rapid and remarkable in terms of the quality of the collections and display methods used. Based on sound curatorial principles, this museum is a major attraction in its own right and all concerned with its management and operation should be proud of their achievements. A number of new features and developments were witnessed during the current assessment and these emphasise the fact that the Bishop's Palace continues to move forward positively and with due regard for the highest standards of curatorial care and public service. And now we move to the final site. In relation to Waterford Treasures, the Medieval Museum, the assessor commented. The Medieval Museum in Waterford is representative of some of the best principles of museum development. The museum is housed in a landmark building and it contains collections of superb quality and international significance. The Medieval Museum is a significant element of the cultural and heritage assets of Waterford City and County. It has contributed to the expansion of this culturally important location and provides opportunities for tourism development as well as local heritage appreciation. Clearly, the magnificent collections held in the Medieval Museum remain a major element supporting this success but the museum has also retained its role as a hub for events and activities, such as through seminars and meetings, emphasizing the importance of the facilities and collections. Congratulations to Waterford Treasures, the Bishop's Palace and Medieval Museum. This ends the citations. In normal times, this would mean following a final farewell and bustling around having photographs taken that we would be near to adjourning to celebrate MSPI participant success with lunch at a local restaurant. Not to be this year, but I look forward to toasting you. This is water. Uh, to toasting you all in person in, we hope, the not too distant future. Congratulations to all involved. I will now hand over to the chairman of the Heritage Council, Michael Parsons, who will say a few words of farewell. Ladies and gentlemen, it is heartwarming to see the continued achievements, aspirations and determination of our vitally important museum sector in these challenging times. Museums can provide spaces to explore diversity, to interact with other cultures and beliefs, to research and find inspiration, to inform the future as well as call up the past. As we all know, museums and collections can create a sense of place in a town or region, generating a sense of pride and well-being. Now more than ever, it is essential to preserve and protect our stories, our treasures, our collections for present and future generations. The Heritage Council sees its role in supporting our museum sector by organising the Museum Standards Programme. Taking part in the standards programme is a public promise made by each participant to care for the collections in perpetuity. 
achieving accreditation shows you are meeting the promise. I wish to join with previous speakers in thanking all of you who participated today. To those who have achieved enhanced or full accreditation, congratulations again. A special thanks to Dr. Kathleen James Chakraborty for her insightful words at today's proceedings. Thanks also, of course, to Virginia Tehan, our Chief Executive, to Beatrice Kelly, Leslie Ann Hayden, Martina Malone and Mark O'Regan for organising today. May everyone in our museums keep up the excellent work and keep safe. Thank you.